Welcome back, Vault Hunters. Dirch here, and yeah, it's been 11 months, and I'm back with a new video. Um, today's video is going to be ranking all the manufacturers. I know I typically don't get into, like, top 10, top 5 stuff. I try to go more in-depth, but that's what I'm doing with this. Um, before I get into this, because this is going to be a long video going through a ton of information, I wanted to give a little shout-out to my buddy Ben, B-Squared. He has started a podcast called Residual Culture that you guys might want to check out because Ben is a longtime friend of mine going back middle school, high school, and we kind of grew up watching the same movies, listening to a lot of the same music, playing a lot of the same video games, just doing that stuff together, you know, playing Magic the Gathering together. Good, fun, nerdy stuff. So if you guys enjoy my stuff, you'll probably enjoy his, so you should go check that out. It is in the description below. Um, and yeah, go check that out. So now on to the video. How I ranked these is I went through the guns only. So that's the first thing. I'm not talking about grenades, class mods, and relics. Uh, well, relics are all not them anyways. But uh, the class mods have nothing to do with the manufacturer. Uh, shields were really unfair because you know, you'll know you have different people. You can compare Tor shotguns to other shotguns. But in the shields game, like, how do you compare a turtle shield to an amp shield to a melee shield? Because each brand makes one kind of shield. There's no way to really compare them fairly. So I decided to exclude those, and by excluding those, I could have kind of done grenades, maybe. But since I wasn't doing shields or class mods, I also took out grenades. That out of the way, I went through the red text and the non-red text. And with looking at those, I ranked the red text 1 through 5, 5 being the best, 1 being the worst. The scale basically is 5 are your god tier guns. They're typically guns you can raid with. They destroy the game like no other. They're the best in class. You know, the Pimpernel, the Liuta, the Lady Fist, the Herald. You can probably guess the 5s, the Norfleet. They stand out on their own as the best of the best. Fours are guns that will tear through everything but raids. Some of them can be used on raids, but they're not really optimal for raids. And they are far better than what they're made from. And they, you know, they rip through the game with ease. Threes are guns that are perfectly viable. They are typically better than what they were made from. Um, you can make them work, but they kind of get down to you're using them because you like them and you want to use them. You're not really using them because they are great. Uh, twos, a lot of the twos are kind of one or two things. They are worse than the guns they're made out of, or maybe they're kind of on par or better but the guns they are made from kind of suck, and they might be viable. They probably are. Most guns in the game are. But maybe you can only use them on one character and one specific build, and they just, they're just they lackluster. And then ones are... They pretty much don't work. A lot of them can kill you. Uh, you might be able to make them work on only one character and like one build, but you're better off using other things. Uh, that's the scale for red text. For non-red text, what I did is I went through... So I went through the assault rifles and I ranked them 1 through 5. 5 being the best, 1 being the worst. Uh, so I was consistent with you know high scores. Because then what I did is I averaged out all the red text. <clears throat> averaged out... Wow, I had a voice crack there. What am I going through puberty? Uh, averaged out the non-red text. So you had two different scores of 1 through 8. And whoever came out on top and bottom is how they fell. A uh, pretty simple way of doing it, but looking through a lot of guns and pretty much everything they make. Um, I did consider, you know, blue and E-Tac and that stuff as well on the regular guns, not just purple. Although I kind of leaned purple. Um, yeah, so that is how I judged them all. So let's see who came out. Uh, is the best and the worst and somewhere in between. Number eight, we have Torg. Yeah, you guys probably aren't going to agree with me on this one. 
but hear me out. And as I go through these, tell me in the comments where you disagree, please. I want to hear it. Um, if I get enough comments and I'm like, holy shit, I was way off base, I will make an amendment and a follow-up to this video saying, hey, I'm an idiot. I was wrong. But uh, I put a lot of thought into this. I spent quite a bit of time going through every red text gun. Um, and I probably scored it, probably went through and scored them all five or six times. I just kept going back over it, back over it. Uh, I just definitely didn't do one pass. So I'm going to rank these, not necessarily best to worst, but, you know, by score. So fives and fours and threes and twos and ones. Uh, number one for Torg, the Uncapped Herald, was the only five. Uh, the Uncapped Herald, I don't think anyone is disagreeing it's a five. It's a badass gun. The 12 pounder, the creamer, the sword explosion, the ogre, and the flacker were all fours. Um, some people might argue the 12 pounder should be a three, but because it's a mission reward, it's really easy to get. Uh, it's just it's damn powerful. I think it's going to be a four. The creamer, I don't think there's any arguments about. The sword explosion, some people might argue the flacker should be lower. Um, and I get that argument. I almost put it at a three. Um, but I didn't want to seem like I was being biased because the flacker at what it does, it's so powerful at. Um, you know, I put the slag as a four for bandit. Spoiler alert. Um, because it's so good at what it does, uh, the flacker is kind of in that class. Gotcha. Uh, down to the threes, we have the pocket rocket, the kerblaster, the nukem, and the ahab. Um, the kerblaster, you know, it's a solid AR, but... Towards OP8, it doesn't really scale that great because you can't crit. It can do self-damage, and it'll still take care of smaller mobs fine, but if you run into, like, constructors or ultimate badasses, it it starts to level out a little bit. Um, the Nukem, because the self-damage it can do to you. The Pocket Rocket, I almost put it at a 2, but I felt like I was being a little harsh on Torg. It is better than the gun it got made from, and it's perfectly viable. It's just that the Herald's so good, no one uses it. Um, and the Ahab, Ahab's pretty powerful. You could almost swap that in the Creamer, but because of the rarity, you know, the 12 pounders of blue, the Ahab's a Seraph that you have to beat one of the worst raid bosses in the game to get. So I kind of knocked that against it a little bit. Um, the twos was the Evil Smasher, the Landscaper, the Devastator, the Tunguska, and the Carnage. Um, the Evil Smasher just... It's not that good. The landscape, you're better off using a regular shotgun because of the delay and how you got to shoot it. And it can do self-damage to you again. The Devastator just... Again, it's a Seraph pistol. You have to beat an annoying raid boss to get it, and it's not very good. The Tunguska... The damage is all right on this thing. All the stats are, but the self-damage radius is so big... You know, a lot of times people will use it for like a second wave launcher and just put themselves back in the fight for life. Um, it just does too much self-damage, and that radius is huge. The Carnage, there's going to be some people that disagree with this for sure, but keep in mind, the Carnage is only really good on like one or two characters, and you're pretty much better off using a regular purple shotgun. Um, the Boom Puppy, you just have a... All right, sorry. That was all those. The ones are the Boom Puppy and the Seeker. The Boom Puppy just sucks. Um, you have a better chance of killing yourself than killing enemies. And the Seeker, you can make it work with Gage, but that's it. It's terrible. So maybe you can make an argument for that for a two. But if you were going to go through and argue these scores, like, well, some people could argue maybe the Seeker could be a two because whatever. Um... Maybe the Ahab should be... I don't know. Ahab's just a three. Um, but if you can argue a few of them up, you could also argue you know, the Flacker is maybe a three and the 12-pounder a three. So I don't think the score would really change that much moving these around. I think these scores are pretty fair. But again, feel free to let me know. So when you add all those up, they came to an average of a 2.8824, which is in seventh place out of all the brands red text guns and this really shows like torg 
a lot of people put it as their favorite manufacturer. You know, Mr. Torg is funny. Explosions are cool. But you take away the Herald. And let's be honest, even at the Herald, it's only a 5 with the 1 prefix. It's not a 5 overall. And Torg really suffers from this because the sword explosion is only a 4 with 1 prefix. The flacker is only a 4 with 1 prefix. Um, you know, a lot of other, other god tier guns, you know, the Liuda works in multiple prefixes. The Pimperdal works in multiple prefixes. Um, Torg here is really stuck with a lot of guns that only work with one prefix. Uh, and I didn't really count that against him, so I think I was a little lenient there. But you take out the Deepa, you've got a few fun guns at four, but then you have a lot of crap. Um, you know, Torg here makes 17 red text guns, five assault rifles, three pistols, five rocket launchers, and four shotguns. And they're, I mean, even the shotguns, you got the sword explosion and the flacker, but other than that, none of them are better than a regular, you know, Ravager. So um, I think I'm pretty fair there. Go into non-red text guns. So for assault rifles, I have Torg in fourth place. Uh, what holds them back here is the bullet speed um, and non-matching elements. Assault rifles are supposed to be mid-range, and even at mid-range, a lot of enemies are running around, and you're missing a lot of shots. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And they're painfully slow, too. So they have that slow fire rate and slow bullet speed, which means when you miss that shot, you're kind of slow on the second shot. Um, for launchers, I had them in dead last place for launchers. And this is one I'm expecting to get a lot of kickback on. So I'm just going to go through all the launchers now so you guys understand my logic. I have Vlad off at number one. Um, mainly because the ammo consumption of them, you can match elements, and you have such a limited ammo pool, and the stats with a fire rate are good enough to get the job done. And keep in mind, this is non red text. You, also, they don't make E-Tech launchers, and E-Tech launchers are really good. Um, you know, Vladoff, you got to have the top knee in there. Um, number two, I have Bandit launchers. Now, Bandit launchers, they have the worst of the E-Tech launchers, but regular purple bandit launchers with the times three rockets for one ammo are insanely good. They do a lot of damage. They have a big AOE. You get to match elements. Pretty good stats. Um, the big mag actually really helps here because uh, you don't have big magazines in launchers typically. Uh, so, yeah, they just they really get the job done. Next, I have Tedior, and I edge this ahead of Maliwan just because of the reload thing. I mean, you got your javelin build kind of stuff. Um, so that's why they edged ahead of Maliwan, but it was pretty close. I could have gone either way with Tedior and Maliwan. And then Torg is left. Um, you know, the damage on him is great, but... You know, you can't match elements, and all the other ones kind of have reason to be above them. So, that's what I did with the launchers. Pistols were was the only category with more than five, and I didn't want to go one through eight there. So, I had a four-way tie for number three. Torg came out at number four. What really hurts Torg here is the fact that, again, like the assault rifles, you have not matching elements... You have slow bullet speed. They're mid-range guns. You miss a lot of shots with them. And that just hurts them. Uh, I honestly really hate torque pistols. Whenever I found them, I would get so annoyed because you'd be shooting them and enemies would just move out of the way of the bullet. And then they're so slow that that next shot takes too long. and They're just not good pistols outside of the depot. Um, shotguns is the last category of guns they make, and here they're number two. I had Jacobs ahead of them. Now, you might say, oh, I like the Ravager better than the Quad. 
Why I put Jacobs ahead of them is a few reasons. Outside of the Ravager, you don't get a whole lot of love for the Hulk. The Hulk takes a big step back from the Ravager. Um, I don't even remember what the two barrel is called, but I, no one uses that. The one barrels are never used by Torg. And because, again, of their speed, reload, and... Well, fire rate speed and bullet speed, they're really limited to in your face. Where Jacob's shotguns, they're pretty much good. All five versions, all five barrels are good. They have a lot more range. You can actually use Jacob's shotguns at mid-range. And that crit bonus tied with their higher accuracy really helps be able to use them. You know, the coach gun is probably better than the quad. The bushwhack is really good. And then the long rider and... I'm forgetting the name of the other one. Um, those are really good kind of long mid-range snipe, kind of like snipe shotguns. So Jacobs edged them out there. I know some people prefer Torg shotguns over Jacobs, but when you kind of look at the whole range of them, uh, I think Jacobs outperforms them for those reasons. You know, Jacobs hits almost as hard. If you crit, I believe they hit harder. You are able to shoot them a lot faster, and there's a lot more versatility with them, a lot more range. Um, so that's it for the non-red text. And then the non-red text, they came out an average of a 2.25, which put them in seventh place. So they came in seventh in both red text and non-red text giving them an average of seven, which was number eight. Overall, of all brands, Torg came in dead last. So let me know where you disagree with these, where you think the scores should have gone up to. Um, I tried to bump some scores around to see if I was being too unfair, and even bumping up some scores, they still came in last. So I actually honestly think, digging through it like this, Torg is the worst gun manufacturer in the game. Number seven is Bandit. And again, there's a lot of people out there saying, how can Bandit be better than Torg? They barely edged them out. Um, looking at the red text guns here, you have for no fives in Bandit, but for number fours, you have the Jolly Roger, the Bada Boom, the Slega, the Tatler, and the Saw Bar. I can maybe see some people arguing the Jolly Roger down to a three, but holy shit, this shotgun gets the job done. It'll tear through all other enemies with ease. You know, it's really freaking powerful. It's got good stats across the board. I think that's a four. I don't think you can argue with the Bada Boom being a four or the Tatler being a four. Um, the Slega, kind of like the Flacker. The Slega is so good at what it does. I don't think. There's going to be a lot of actually kickback for that. Some people might argue with the saw bar, but if you try to argue with the saw bar, you don't know how to use it. The saw bar is actually raid worthy. Um, there is, you can definitely kill Terramorphous with the saw bar, even on OP8. You can take out all the dragons except Incinerator with the saw bar. You, hmm, yeah, you can definitely do Hyperius with the saw bar. And I'm not even talking just boar, like, you could kill Hyperius with a saw bar or with other characters. Um, probably forgetting some. But yeah, you can raid with this thing, but it's not really optimal for it. This is definitely a four. For the threes, I have got the Bone Shredder, the Dog, the Tinderbox, the Rock Salt, the Teeth of Terra, and Sledge's Shotgun. So you have a bunch of threes here. Um, you know, the Bone Shredder is a pretty cool SMG. It's definitely not as good as the Tatler. It's got a lot less range, but this thing will shred through enemies. The dog, the dog's a damn solid shotgun. Like bandit shotguns are pretty damn solid. This is a better than average bandit shotgun. It gets the job done. It's exactly what a three should be. This is like the definition of a three. The tinderbox, I almost put it at a two just because bandit pistols suck. Um, it's got that weird arc, but this thing does work pretty damn good once you can get used to that. The Rock Salt, same thing. It's a bandit shotgun with just kind of a stat boost. Um, pretty damn solid. The Teeth of Terra, 
This one, if it didn't have that stupid firing pattern, could be a four. This thing works really well, but with a firing pattern, you kind of have to be standing on top of the enemy. But when you are standing on top of a flash enemy, it's really good. It's fire only. Uh, Sledge's shotgun, you know, it's another solid three. It's better than an average bandit shotgun because of the red text effects, but it's not great. Um, for the twos, we have the chopper, the roaster, and the gub. Uh, the chopper, I have seen niche builds make use of it. Um, it does have high DPS with what it does, but, you know, it burns through that ammo. Um, yeah, it's a two. Although, some might actually argue with that to be higher. Uh, the roaster, you could almost make an argument for this to be a three, because it works just fine. Um... It is slightly better than this red tax counterpart. But I don't know. I just it's it's so minimally better than a blue one, it kind of annoys me. Um so I put it down to a two. The gub is another one that to me the reason this is a two, it's better than a regular bandit pistol, but bandit pistols suck and you really, really have to want to use the gub to use it. Like, it works, but it sucks. And then the Madhouse is a 1 because the Madhouse is... It doesn't even really work with Gage. And Gage is the one that should be able to use this. So, that is all of the Bandit Red Text ones. And, again, I don't think I was bumping things up here because, you know, you could all... You could almost make an argument for the roaster and the gub to be threes. Because they are perfectly viable. They are better than the red text counterparts. It's just no one really uses them. Um, I don't think there's a lot of things people would knock down here. Maybe some people sh thinks the tinderbox should be a two. But you're splitting hairs there. I don't think any of the fours would change. Uh, when you add all that together, they came out to an exact average of a three which puts them in tied for fifth place for red text guns. For non-red text, so assault rifles, I put them dead last. Their assault rifles are pretty bad. Um, you can match elements unlike Torg, but like their, their EJAC assault rifle is nearly unusable. It's so bad. Um, that Doc Mercy quest would fucking piss me off. Um, their spin guns are really bad and just take too long to spin up. They're pretty terrible. Um, yeah, Bandit ARs just are not good. Their launchers, as I kind of already went through, they got second place on the launchers. I love Bandit launchers. People really underestimate how good these are, I think. Um, pistols, they also came in dead last. That big... Their pistol's magazine size is so big, but their other stats suffer so bad for it. Like, they they have slow bullet speed, not as bad as Torg, but they have slow bullet speed, slow fire rate, not great damage, terrible accuracy. They're just not good. Um, they really, really annoy me. Um, shotguns, they came in fourth. Now, bandit shotguns are really good. And this seems like it's taking a hit on them, but the problem is everyone makes good shotguns. So, you know, it's stiff competition in there. And SMGs, they also came in fourth. And like shotguns, SMGs in this game are really good. So it was really kind of hard to, to put them that low there. Um, because banded SMGs, I think, are some of the better bandit guns. Uh, their SMGs really work, and that's one case where the really big magazine comes in handy because SMGs typically you are spraying out a lot of bullets. But when you look at the competition, like shotguns, it is what it is. So with all that said, Bandit had a rank of 2 uh, average on its non-red text guns, which gave it an 8. So when I average all that together... That was a 6.5 average. Torg was a 7. That puts it in 7th place. Just ahead of Torg, but not by a lot. And on average, really looking in depth, 
I really believe that Bandit slightly edges out Torg, even though Torg's got the bigger superstar. When you go across the board, you take a few guns out of Torg, and the rest of it, it's pretty lackluster. Moving on. For number six, there's actually a two-way tie for five and six, right between Tidor and Jacobs. And rather than forcing one to be better than the other and play with some numbers, I just left it as a tie. So I'll start with Jacobs first, and then we'll do TDR. Jacobs came out with two fives, the Orphan Maker and the Becca. And I can see complaints for both of these that they should be fours. Um, the Orphan Maker is a four on most characters, but Deputy Sale is so fucking powerful that I bumped it up to a five because... It is one of the best setups for Sal, if not the best setup. And it just wrecks things. It can destroy raids so fast. Uh, it's just insane how damn good the Orphan Maker is on Sal. So uh, I push it up to a 5 for that. Um, it was on the line. The Becca's a 5. Now the Becca, you can kill raids with it. It's typically not the best gun to kill raids with. But... The peak is almost the rate of mobbing, and this might be the single best gun on the peak. Um, holy crap. The great One of the great things about the Becca where people forget is its damage output versus ammo is so good. This is probably the most ammo-efficient gun in the game, including the Infinity. Uh, it is insanely ammo-efficient, which really helps on the peak. Uh, for fours, I have the Twister, the Hammer Buster, the Maggie, the Striker. These all really define a four to me. Uh, the Twister, one of my favorite guns in the game. You Gage can raid with it a little, but it's not really as optimal. And yeah, but uh, the rest of the game, it just tears through. The Hammer Buster, I've heard some people shit on that. And some people might argue this should be a three, but those people don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Because the Hammer Buster will shred through enemies. It has insane damage. It has great fire rate. Decent magazine size. Um, you know, it's got better damage than all, some snipers. And way bigger ammo pool. Bigger magazine than a lot of snipers. And way faster fire rate. So you can just lay down enemies with this. Um, it's good from close range, short range. And you can just body shot enemies to death. You don't have to always crit them with it. But, you know, critting, you obviously get a huge bonus. So the Hammer Buster is insanely powerful if you just don't suck. Um, the Maggie is obviously way better than an Iron and tears through enemies. The Striker, similar thing. That crit bonus, the accuracy, uh, you can rip through enemies with that thing. For threes, you got a lot of threes because Jacobs has a lot of guns. There's the Judge, the Hydra, the Greed, the Cobra, the Law, the Tidal Wave, the Triquerta, the Trespasser, the Skull Masher, and the Hawkeye. A lot of guns here. Um, you know, the Judge is better than a typical Jacob's Pistol um, for being blue. It does what it does. The... Yeah, there we go. I thought I was missing the law there. Um, you know, the Hydra is a pretty damn powerful shotgun. Jacob's shotguns are awesome. Uh, but it's not good enough to be a four. The Greed is based on, you know, a blue pistol. You add fire. Other than, other than adding the fire, it's pretty much the same thing. But making an elemental Jacob's pistol is pretty good. But it's not good enough to be a four. The Cobra. I know some people hate this, but it's definitely not a two. Um, the Cobra definitely gets the job done. It's better than a blue, uh, Jacobs sniper that it's based on, but with the explosion, explosive radius and all that stuff, you can do some really cool things with the Cobra. Um, the law, because it's melee damage boost, you know, it's not the rapier at end game, but it's definitely a three. The tidal wave, another solid Jacobs shotgun, not good enough to be a four. The Triquerta, similar thing. Um, the Trespasser, this was a hard one to kind of rank. The Trespasser really sucks, 
but it's really important for Veracitus and Pete. But it's only important for like a short part of those fights. And Pete's so easy, you don't even need the Trespasser for him. Uh, Vora's a lot harder. So with that, I kind of left it at a three. Um, it is a raiding gun, but it's not a raiding gun like, you know, the Interfacer or the Sandhawk. Uh, or even the Grog, but it does play a small part in two of them, so that's where I put the Trespasser. Some people would probably argue higher, some lower. It's where I left it. The Skull Masher, I almost had this a four, but really, in most cases, in most characters, a Muckamuck just outperforms it. Um, it just needs maybe another pellet in there or a little better spread, smaller spread, I should say. It definitely works. It can definitely tear through enemies pretty well. But because the Muckamuck or even the Diab and some of those are probably slightly better, I bumped it down to a 3. The Hawkeye is similar. Some people say the Hawkeye is worse than the Muckamuck because on 0, um, the Muckamuck will get more damage with Critical Ascension than the Hawkeye. But what people also forget is the Hawkeye has... A bigger magazine than the Muckamuck. It has um, faster reload by quite a bit. Um, I think it's got like three extra bullets and it goes from a four reload on the Muck down to a three depending on parts with the Hawkeye. Um, yeah, so you have better fire rate, reload, magazine size, uh, all, all those, and zoom. So the Hawkeye, not only like the big critical hit thing, but it definitely outperforms the Muck Muck on a lot of characters. And even the characters where the Muck hits harder, the other DPS kind of can make up for it a little bit. So I didn't try to put this up to a 4 because of those. But for people saying it's worse than a Muck, it should be a 2. Not really. Um, then going down to the 2s, I have the Elephant Gun, the Stomper, the Stink Pot, the Unforgiven, the Godfinger. Some people might argue these should be... Some of these should just jump down to one. But the Elephant Gun works if you hit crits. Um, I did put the Buffalo down to a one, so I kind of split the difference with those two. Uh, the Buffalo hits harder, but without the Iron Sights, it's harder to hit. And it's slower, so you're punished more for missing, and you're going to miss more without the Iron Sights. So I split the difference there. Um... The Stomper works, but there's not really a reason to get it. The Stink Pot, you can make it work, but it, it doesn't really scale well to the higher levels. The Unforgiven, I split the difference with that in the Rex. The Rex is the one, the Unforgiven is the two. The Rex is more powerful and slower, but the Unforgiven works a little bit better. But it's probably worse than an Iron, so it's a two. The Godfinger, some people might say this should be a one, but... If you know what you're doing with the Godfinger, you can actually make it pretty damn solid. Um, the bullet split and stuff. Maybe it needs a B to kind of get there. But uh, the Godfinger can definitely get a lot of work done, especially with the bullet split and the unlisted pellets and all that stuff. So it has a lot of benefits people forget to talk about. Um, so that is Jacob's Red Text. So if we go to the average of all of them, it's a 2.875, which puts it in last place. Part of what really hurts Jacobs is they made 24 uh, legendary, or sorry, 24 red text guns, which is the most out of anybody. Uh, Hyperion had 18, Molly won 19. You know, five assault rifles, six pistols, six shotguns, and seven snipers. And they really got killed with all the slow guns. I mean, three ones really brings you down um, with the Buffalo, Cowboy, and Rex. They're just so fucking slow. They did a bad job, uh, Gearbox, of balancing the slow, powerful guns. They either made them too slow or not powerful enough. Um, I like that concept, and I wish they did it better. But here, Jacobs, they just did not. And then there's a ton of threes that don't hurt, but don't really help bring it up. There's just a lot of average guns. You know, things like the Triquerta and Hydra. They're cool shotguns, but the spread's so big, you can only really use them at close range. 
But regular Jacob shotguns, you know, the quad, the coach, and that stuff, those things will also decimate at close range, but they'll also have a little bit of range on them. So, in a way, those guns are kind of better at point blank range because they're extra pellets and stuff, but they're almost worse with a little range. I don't know. They they have a lot of kind of average there. Going to the non-red text, uh, Old Jacobs is also kind of hurt a little bit without any elemental matching, well, for the most part. Um, so yeah, non-red text with assault rifles, I have them at number one. Um, I don't think you can really argue this. Jacobs makes awesome assault rifles. They're the only ones without the crit penalty, and instead of a crit penalty, they have a 15% type B crit bonus. Um... And on here, they have really good damage on their assault rifles. Some of them are pretty damn close to like lower sniper rifle damage without that bigger snipe crit bonus, obviously. But then you have the really fast like Vlad off fire rate if you can pull the trigger that fast. You do have to manage to recoil, but Jacob's assault rifles are really freaking solid. Um, the doll ones are really great um, because you lose that recoil. The Vladoff, especially the Vladoff spin barrel, the Gatling gun with that times three is insanely good. The Jacob's matching barrel is good. So you also have some more range on them too, which helps. Uh, Jacob's pistols, I have them in second place. Uh, this one I can see some contesting on, but the reason so many other pistols have problems. Um, Jacob's pistols... They have good bullet speed. They have a 25% type B crit bonus, which is pretty large. Uh, they have really good damage, really good fire rate. It takes some skill to use them. But as far as regular pistols go, they work insanely well. Um, yeah, all the other ones kind of have some problems that bring them below that. Shotguns, I have them also at number one. And the reason they edge out Torg here, I think I covered it when I was talking about Torg, but they're all good. All five versions, all five barrels. And you also get some versatility with them on range because they have good accuracy. Um, you, they are, a lot of them are, you know, well, you can get some that are one shot. But, uh, you know, some of the bigger barrels are typically two shots and the smaller barrels like four shots. So you are reloading more of them, but they have insanely fast reloads and... A lot of them just take one shot to kill an enemy anyways. Um, then you skip down to snipers. No SMGs for them. And snipers, I have them s right in the middle at number three. Um, they hit the hardest out of all snipers. They have 160 critical hit bonus instead of 100 on all the other snipers. Um, so between the biggest damage, the second best fire rates, I believe... And the highest critical hit damage. That's a really good reason for them to be awesome snipers. And they are awesome snipers. But you are slightly held back because you can't match elements. So that's why they're number three there. So they're last with the red text. But non-red text, they actually came out to be number two with an average of 4.25. So when you take those two together, they came out to an average um, where is my score? There we go. To an average of 5. 8 plus 2 equals 10. That's not hard math. Um, so that put them in 5th place. Uh, smack tied with the TDR. And again, let me know where you disagree, where you think things should be lower or higher, but the red text are pretty bad. Their non-red texts are really good. Um, the argument kind of lies with Jacobs where people are going to disagree or whatever. The fact that you can't just hold down to the trigger um, and you have to aim a little bit more. They take a little bit higher skill, but they are insanely good. So that's where Jacobs sit. Moving on to TDR. Okay. Uh, starting off with the blockhead. Uh, actually, Blockhead and Baby Maker and the Omen were all fours for TDR. Um, these are all really solid guns. I don't see a lot of people arguing about that. Sure, the Blockhead's only in fire, but holy crap, that thing wrecks enemies. The Baby Maker, 
which is so good at chucking and everyone can chuck with it. Um, and you notice the gun ring is not a four. I'll get to that in a second. And the omen is a really, really good shotgun. So, yeah, I don't think there's a lot of arguing there. Going down the number, the threes, you would have the Octo, the Gunnering, the Deliverance, and the Avenger. Um, I know I have the Baby Maker at a four because of the chucking and not a Gunnering, but the Baby Maker is kind of good for everyone chucking, where the Gunnering is a lot harder to use and has a more limited use case. So that's why that's down there. Um the Octo, it's a solid shotgun. It's better than a regular T-Doer shotgun. It gets the job done, but it doesn't dominate. The Deliverance, it's got some weird use case. There's a plane flying overhead. I don't know if that's going to pick up a mic. Um, the Reload can do some cool things. It's not amazing, but it works. The Avenger, I'm expecting some people to argue that the Avenger should be a 4. But it's not a great SMG to shoot. It's okay to shoot. Um, and then the reload, you can do cool things with the reload uh, to kill like Hyperius, but outside of a few, it's too niche to be a four in my opinion, basically. Uh, some people might disagree, but the way I look at it, it's like, yes, people use it for chucking builds again to kill Hyperius, and Damonite even showed you can use it with Maya Engage to kill Hyperius, but... Outside of, uh, you know, I think a small group of people, I don't think there's a lot of people doing those raid time trials that can actually pull that stuff off that well. So, you know, leaving that at a three. I'm expecting some arguments there. Uh, I have the Retro at a two because splat guns really suck and it doesn't really make them much better. It's the Retro. Um, you can make it work. I'm not arguing that. It's a viable gun, but it's... You have to really want to make it work. And then the bunny, number one, because it has a better chance of killing you than the enemies. That might not be 100% true, but it's pretty freaking terrible. So, not a lot of red text guns for TDR. Um, TDR that put them at a three average, which puts them right at a five. So, moving on to non red text. Uh, they do not make ARs. Launchers, I kind of already covered. I put them at a three just ahead of Maliwan, but that one could have gone either way. Pistols, I have them sitting at a three. Their pistols are okay, not great. Uh, their bullet speed are better than some, which makes you hit. They can come in all elements, but they're really good at chucking, which kind of helps bump them up, but not up enough to be number two. So they're tied at number three with a bunch of others. Shotguns are sitting dead last. Um, T door shotguns are not the best for chucking because they have such small ammo pools, and as shotguns, they're not that great. Um, you can make them work, but pretty much all the other brands are better. Um, SMGs, I have them sitting in third place once again. You can use them to shoot. They're just fine. Uh, the chucking bumps them up a little bit. If they didn't have the chucking, I would have them maybe last. Um, but the chucking puts them above a bandit. They don't shoot as good as bandit. Um, they're DPS. But the chucking helps. and They're really good for chucking. So they have big mags because they're SMGs and they work well. Especially the Plasma Caster. The TDR Plasma Caster is one of the best chucking games yeah, chucking guns in the game. So, with all that said for TDR, they came in an average of 2.5 on non-red text, which was 5th place. So they came in 5th place in both... Um, yeah, red text and non-red text, leaving them right there tied with Jacobs. Moving on. Number four is Mollywan. Um, yeah, Mollywan is a favorite of a lot, so I don't think a lot of people are going to be disappointed that it's around here, although some would probably argue it should be higher. Um, red text-wise, they're pretty freaking good. So let's go through the fives, which they have four fives. The Grog, the Pimpernel, the Ruby, and the North Fleet. 
Um, you could almost argue the ruby could be a four now. But um, I'm going to leave it up there at the five. So the Grog, just being so goddamn it good at healing and some of the offhand effects you can do with Sal, um, being the ultimate healing gun in the game, I don't think you can really argue that. Um, the Pimpernel being probably tied or the best sniper, you can make an argument with that in Lee Luda um, for different things. Um, definitely a five on just for being that good of a sniper, but then you get the Sal, uh, the offhand sniping, the... Pimp Hab basically will destroy any raid in seconds, or pretty damn close to that. But on all other characters, it's just so good. It's the best boar gun in the game. Maya, it's the best chain reaction gun. It's just, it's just amazing all around. Um, the Ruby is the one you could probably argue down to a four now that the Grog is in the game. But yeah, I uh, I left it up there. Um, the North Fleet, again, it's the fucking North Fleet. There's no arguing that shouldn't be a five. Uh, I only had one four for Molly Wan, which, interesting enough, I had at the Florentine. Some people might argue this should be a three, but, you know, it's based off of Plasma Caster. It's an insanely good slag gun. It's really easy to get because you can just buy it from the Seraph vendor, and it's not that hard to get crystals. Everyone should be able to beat Pete at this point. If you can't beat all the raids, you should be able to beat one. Um, and it does really good damage. It does good slag. It has high slag chance. And yes, if it was swapped with the the bullet being shock and the splash being slag, it would be better. But it's still really freaking good. Um, I mean, you can just run this and just run through enemies at OP8. Uh, the hive I have, or actually I'll just go through all the threes here, like I've been doing, and then go back and explain them. For threes, I have the hive, the good touch, the bad touch, the crit, the little Eevee, the thunderball fist, the hellfire, the infection, and the storm. So, the hive, the hive's a really cool rocket launcher. You can do cool things with it, but it's, it's time to kill is kind of slow. And yeah, you can do like the drunk, the drunk hive effect and just rain hell, but it's not quite good enough to be a four. Um, the good touch and the bad touch, I debated on these, if they should be fours or not. But when you kind of get to that OP8 level, they're good. They work really well, but they're kind of more leveling up game guns and end game guns. They still work at end game. But there's just more desirable guns to have. So that's why I left them at threes. The crit, for a similar reason, is a little bit better than those with bigger critical hit bonus. But the drop out of your hand thing is pretty terrible. The little, little Eevee. Um, it's got a pretty cool effect on it with a cooldown. And it's not a terrible pistol to shoot. It's got that little arc, but the damage is pretty solid. Um, yeah. So it works pretty well. It's, it's a three. Thunderball Fist, similar thing. Um, you can do some pretty cool things with this, but you kind of got to set up for it. And it has self-damage, but, but that self-damage isn't enough to bring it down for a two because how effective it can be. <laughs> the Hellfire, this is so close to being a four. Um, it's one of the only non non e -tech SMGs with splash damage, and it, unlike an E-Tech, it's just one damage, or sorry, one ammo per bullet, where e -techs are two, but the damage of it is less than an E-Tech. But typically, you have a big enough magazine size and ammo pool to afford the two bullets with the e -techs, making the Hellfire slightly less effective than a lot of fire e -tech pit. Uh, SMGs, making it a three. The infection I toyed around with, should it be a three? I almost put it at a two because it's time to kill is pretty long. It does work. Um, but yeah, the time to kill is slow and a lot of times you're better off using other guns, but I left it at a three. The storm is a three. 
The Storm was a tough one, because in some ways it's not as good as a regular Snyder. Because removing the splash damage from the bullet and kind of putting them out to the orbs makes it a little less effective, ambient shock only. But in other ways you can make it better, because you can boost that damage, gauge a... a uh, Axton uh, can boost it, I believe, because it's grenade damage. Um, so you and it's got a big AOE, which hits a lot of enemies. So I kind of left it at a three, and it's got increased stats from a regular Snyder too. So it's got bigger base damage and some other stats. And I think it's the stat boost that kind of pushed it up to a three. Um, and the fact that Snyders are just really freaking good. So even if it's slightly worse than a Snyder, it's still pretty solid. Um, the share of me, I put it a two. Some people really defend this. I fucking hate this gun. Um, taking the splash damage off of a Molly Wan sniper makes it a crappy sniper. The healing's not that great. Most sniper zeros, you know, with CA, if you switch to a non sniper, you lose your stacks. Most sniper zeros don't even bother with this. They'll just use transfusion grenades and not use this thing. That says how bad it is. Um, it's just a piece of shit sniper. The pyrophobia. The effect is cool, but it's not cool enough to really make it good. Um, it doesn't actually... It's rare that you have the kind of space to make it go and go off and hit a lot of enemies. So situationally, the effect is cool, but it doesn't really work in the way the game is designed. Uh, the Volcano, I have a 2. Some people might argue this should be a 3 because, you know, I think because it gets grenade boost, Axton is the only character that can make it better than a Fire Snyder. But that's one character. For everyone else, it's not as good as a Snyder. And it doesn't have better stats than a Snyder like the Storm. It's Elemental Lock. So this one I did put down to a 2. Because really... On all characters but Axton, you're just better off using a purple Snyder. And then for ones, I did the Chulain and the Wonderlust. The Chulain self-slags you, which is the death sentence. Never use that thing. It is terrible. And the Wonderlust just... It doesn't really work. I mean, Gage can kind of make it work, but that's about the only one. It's just a terrible gun. Um... I've seen some interesting things done with it, but it's too niche to make it above a 1. Um, all said then, for Molly Wan, you have an average of 3.1053, which puts it in 4th place for Red Text Guns, which is what it got overall. So, pretty damn uh, solid there. So, for non-Red Text... Um, Launchers, they don't make ARs, so go down. Launchers, we've already, I think I already talked about. Maybe I didn't go through all of them, but I have it in fourth place for launchers. Um, part of it is, you know, the TDR with the chucking just kind of edged it out. Like I said, those two were pretty damn close. Pistols, Molly wants sitting there tied for third with a bunch. Um... The thing that holds back Molly Wan pistols is the two ammo per shot. So they have splash damage on the bullet, which is really good, and you can match elements. But the price you pay for two ammo per shot for the Molly Wan pistols makes them have really short magazines, so you're reloading a lot, and they don't hit that hard, even with the splash damage. So they're just not fantastic. They're, they're fine, they're okay, and that's why they're a 3. Um, but if you get the double prefix on them, 4 ammo per shot, ugh, that really hurts. Uh, they do not make shotguns, and then SMGs, I ended up putting them dead last. And I really struggled with that, because Molly 1 SMGs are good, but they don't have splash damage like their pistols and snipers. And they have very medium stats, but all SMGs are matching elements, and the increased dots doesn't really help. So, just to kind of justify that, I'm going to do what I do with the Torg and kind of talk about all the SMGs. So, I have Hyperion at number one, because they just have damn good stats, and their accuracy lets you use them at sniper range. 
and <clears throat> sure you miss the first shot or so but then you're dead center and you can just take down enemies so good Dowl I have number two because again their stats are really good and kind of like Hyperion you got that burst and low recoil and you can just lay crits down like crazy then I have TDR number three mainly because the chucking bumped him up above Bandit who is number four and then Maliwan. I honestly can run through enemies better with a Bandit SMG than a Maliwan because the big mag and yeah uh, I was kind of surprised it came out like that, but that's where I put them. And then snipers, I put them number two. Um, Vladoff came at number one. Vladoff snipers are just so fucking good. Uh, Molly One snipers, they have very average stats, but they're elemental and 50% splash damage on that big um, sniper damage pool is pretty damn good. So that's why they came in above Jacobs is... Yeah, the matching elements really cranks up the damage and the splash damage as well. So all of that said, for Molly Wan, came out to an average of a 2.5, which put him at 5th place uh, overall. And a 4th and a 5th place gave him an overscore of 4.5, which was in 4th place. Which I think makes sense for Molly Wan, because... There are a lot, so many Molly Wong guns. They have the great red text, but other than that, it's a lot of good, not great. Number three, then, is Doll. Now, some people don't like Doll because they don't like the burst mechanic, but their guns are pretty good. And let's look, go through and look at them and talk about them. So the Sandhawk is a the only five for Dahl, and I don't think anyone can argue this, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about why the Sandhawk is amazing. Next, they've got a handful of fours. The Lascow, the Sloth, the Hornet, and the Pitchfork. And I can see some arguments here. Now, the Lascow, I can see some people saying, eh, it should only be a three. Part of the reason I put this up to a four is... It is the easiest gun in the game to farm. You can just go in and out the door um, at, God, Frostburn Canyon? Yeah, I'm drawing a blank on the name. I believe that's it. And then you you do that ten times. There's ten of them in a pool, so you can go have your pick of the parts, just run over there. You can almost run over there without even killing enemies sometimes. And just go pick them up. There you go. You got a bunch of guns. And... To me, it's the best leveling up gun in UVHM because of that. You can just always go grab new ones at level so easily. Um, if you run into money problems, you know, you go pick up 10, pick your favorite one, sell off the other 9. There's so many good things to this gun. And I know the good touch and the bad touch, I put a 3 because they're kind of leveling up guns and not end game guns. But the Lascao is just so fucking easy to get. And the good touch and the bad touch, you can just keep taking Moxie, but you do sometimes run into money problems, especially if you're a hoarder and you don't empty your backpack or pick things up. So this just edged out up to a four, even though it's kind of in a similar place to those. But I can see an argument to bump that down. The sloth I put at a four. A lot of people don't understand how good the sloth is. This thing hits so hard. Um, yeah, it's a burst sniper, but you can control the burst. Um, I actually kind of sometimes recommend not putting the doll stock on it or trying to get one without that. Uh, that way it's got a shorter burst and you definitely don't even need the full burst on a lot of enemies. But uh, this thing just hits so hard. It's a top tier sniper. It will rip through so many enemies with ease. The Hornet's an insanely powerful uh, pistol. You know, that big 80% splash damage on it. It's just, you know, it's elemental locked. It's not really the raiding gun, but it's the perfect four where it just destroys the main game. But uh, you don't really use it on raids. And then the pitchfork. The pitchfork can be used in raids. Uh, it hits so goddamn hard. It's one of the hardest hitting snipers, but the ammo consumption is so big. That's what keeps it back from being a five. Uh, then we go down to the threes. You got the Gwen Heads, the Scorpio, the Teapot, the Veruk, the Emperor, and the Seraphim. Um, these are all really solid guns. You know, Gwen's head is another one that's really easy to get. It spawns in multiple locations. It's a solid pistol. 
the Scorpio, you know, it's a quest reward. It's, you know, really solid, has a big burst, easy to keep them on crit. The teapot is so close to the Hornet, I almost bumped that up to a four. Um, but it's just not quite as good as the Hornet, and the Hornet's actually easier to get because Knuckle Drager is so easy to kill and such a, you know, you can spawn in right there, so there's zero run to go fight him. And the teapot, you can only get the once. Well, yeah. Once per playthrough, really, because the quest reward. Um, the Varuk's an incredibly solid assault rifle, but it's... Mm, it's a little too situational the way the spread is to be a 4. On loaders, it's probably a 4, but on other enemies, smaller enemies, it's a 3. Uh, the Emperor, it's solid. It's not great. It's fine. The Seraphim, it's locked to fire only. It's not quite good enough to be a 4. Some might be able to make an argument for that, but I left it at the 3. The Dominator and the Bearcat, both, uh, there's no 2s. Those both skip to a 1 because they're both just terrible. Sure, I know Chris Mason made the Bearcat kind of work on Krieg, but it's not enough to bump it up. It's just a bad gun. Um, you can kind of use it with Maya too, with uh, um, the backdraft builds, but it's not fantastic. Um, so yeah, that is Doll Red Text. So, you know, some people might argue the Bearcat should be a 2, and maybe the Lascal should be a 3, but you're not really changing much. I don't think a lot of the other ones, big arguments, but again, let me know. Uh, so that put them at a 3.1538, uh, which put them at 3rd place for Red Text Guns, which is what they ended up being overall. Non-Red Text, uh, their Assault Rifles, they're at 3rd place. Uh, their assault rifles are pretty good. Um, you can, you know, you can keep them on target, hit a lot of crits with them, but uh, Vladoff kind of beat them out just because the raw speed of Vladoff. Uh, they do not make launchers. Their pistols were tied for third. Um, yeah, they're close to second here because of the burst. You can keep a lot on crit and do some decent work with them. Um, and because they're elemental, you can match. I can see an argument f to swap them with Jacobs. It was pretty close. Shotguns they do not make. So moving down to SMGs. They are in second place for the SMGs. Um, kind of for that same reason of pistols. Just that burst, you can... Keep them on point. They have really solid stats on their SMGs. They're just pretty good. And snipers, they're in fourth place. Because the burst fire on the sniper is not as advantageous as it is on the other guns. Because a lot of them are kind of your one shot. And snipers have a small ammo pool. And then again, Jacobs, Mollywan, and Vladoff came out ahead because they're just pretty good. So, Dahl then, for non-red text, came in at third place. And that put them overall third and third. And they ended up being third overall. So, yeah, again, some people don't like the burst fire mechanic, but the nice thing about the burst fire and the low recoil, you can land multiple quick shots in succession on critical hit points. And even sometimes when they don't have the best DPS, there's a thing of DPS versus burst damage in the game. And for a lot of enemies, you only need a few shots to put them down. And Dahl excels at that. And even on some bigger, like, badass enemies, you know, the Sloth can drop, like, ultimate badasses in a burst or two pretty easily. You know, you can just quickly take these enemies down with a burst or two. And that's all you need. So it's not this massive sustained DPS of a Vladoff. Um, or some other guns that might show better DPS. But they do so well with that burst damage. Which really matters. So that is Dahl. Alright then. Coming in at number 2 is Hyperion. And kind of like Dahl. Some people really hate uh, Hyperion. Because they don't like the sway. And I keep hearing the argument. Oh I don't like to waste all that ammo. Missing 3 shots to get targeted in. But 
while you waste, you might waste a shot or two getting targeted in, you also save ammo by being able to stay on crit so well. So it's a give and take. You don't actually waste ammo with Hyperion guns unless you really suck. Um, you waste way more bullets with Torg with a slow bullet speed, with uh, Vladoff with just that fast fire rate. You're just going to miss a bunch of shots. Um, there's, you know, TD or chucking. <laughs> I guess it's not a waste if you hit the chuck and kill him. But um, on a lot of other guns, you waste more bullets than Hyperion. So I don't actually buy that argument. Anyways, let's... <coughs> sorry. Let's uh, get in and talk about Hyperion. So they have a decent amount of fives here. I have the Fibber, the Lady Fist, the Conference Call, and the Interfacer. These are all amazing guns. Now, I didn't split the Fibber into the three different ones because it's just the one Fibber. But, um, you know, mainly the Ricochet Fibber is definitely a five. Um, it's one of the best pistols in the game on a ton of characters. It's almost broken good. The Lady Fist, I don't think there's any arguing that 800% critical hit bonus, what it can do. The Conference Call, some people might say the Conference Call should be a 4 now, but why I still have it up at a 5 with the Interfacer, I don't think anyone's going to argue the Interfacer, is the Conference Call, I mean, it still has unlisted pellets, so it's still insanely good with the B, not as good as it once was, but it's still a good rating gun for multiple characters. On Gage, a lot of times it's better than the Interfacer. On the Son of Craw, which is a raid boss, or it has a raid difficulty, it's actually better than the Interfacer on that boss. Um, it's one of the best guns for flying enemies in the games. Surveyors, which are so annoying. Um, it's more ammo friendly than the Interfacer, which makes it more playable in the main game. Um, Outside of Sal with all of his ammo regen. So that's why I still have the conference call out of five. Uh, moving down to the fours, we have the Heartbreaker, Morningstar, Slow Hand, Longbow, Bitch, and Butcher. Um, the Heartbreaker, sure, it's elemental locked. And unlike the good touch and the bad touch, this game's got more end game. I don't want to say viability. End game quality, maybe. Um, the Morning Star, if you can hit a bunch of crits, this thing gets to crazy good damages. Although Hyperion snipers generally suck. Uh, the Slow Hand is an awesome shotgun, but it's not quite good enough to be a 5. Um, it doesn't really have that raid ability. Although, on Hyperius, it's it can be used quite nicely instead of a launcher to hit the Hyperius minions to get the shields off. Um, it's also one of the best slagging guns in the game. The longbow is an insanely good sniper. It takes a little bit of uh, getting used to the flight pattern. But once you do, this thing wrecks the fuck out of enemies. The bitch is quite amazing. But not quite amazing enough to... It doesn't really raid. So it's... The bitch is another one of those ones that's a perfect four. It'll tear through the main game. It's really good in the peak. But it's not quite up to that rating potential. And the Butcher, like the bitch, is pretty much right there. Um, same reasoning. This, to me, for playing through just mobbing and... Not bosses, but just playing through mobbing, it's better than the conference call interfacer. Um, because its DPS is perfect for that. And it just tears through enemies. But... You start to see the difference on the DPS when you get to the bosses. Its ammo and its fire rate is what makes it better than those for mobbing. Because shotguns do not have a big ammo pool. Um, moving down to the threes, you have the Fremington's Edge, the Logan's Gun, the Invader, and the Actualizer. Um, the Fremington's Edge, it's probably it's definitely better than a regular Hyperion Sniper, but regular Hyperion Snipers are just bad, so it's not good enough to be a 4, in my opinion. And sometimes a zoom is an over-zoom. The Logan's Gun, it's only a 3 because of the sham and Rocket's small ammo pool. Um, the Invader, it would be a 4 if it didn't suck through so much ammo. 
Um, the actualizer, I almost put this up to a four, but because it's, it's actually easier to get than the bitch. It's not quite as good as the bitch. It's some setups that can outperform the bitch. Um, but it's kind of left at a three. So I can see that argument to bump that up, but I can also see people arguing to put the conference call down to a four, which balances out for the average. Um, the commerce is a two because it's just, just not really any better than a blue unique. Um, same thing with the shotgun 1340. It's got the exact same stats and it doesn't have the optimal barrels. I mean, it's fine, it's viable, but you really have to want to use it. The yellow jacket, the bullets are just too slow to make it a three. Um, typically, you're just way better off using a plasma caster and it's elemental locked. And then the bane is a one because, yeah, I know some people are going to say, oh, the DPS is really great on it, but you're just going to die if you try using it in OP8 because you're so fucking slow. So, yeah, that is my red text for Hyperion. Which, if we go and look at it, it gives you an average of 3.5, which is actually number one for red text guns. For non-red text guns, uh, we go down for pistols. I have them sitting at third with a bunch of people. Um, you know, they don't really have that big stopping power, but they're pretty solid. So that's where they're tied for three. Um, shotguns, they are sitting at third as well. The shotguns are really solid, but they don't really stand out like the uh, the Jacobs and the Torg. They just don't have that massive stopping power. But unlike those two, you can match elements, and they're really good, and they're really accurate. Uh, the reverse recoil works great on them. They're almost better off with their smaller barrels because you can get more shots, and therefore you know, stay on target a little further. But yeah, the red tech shotguns are definitely the best in the game, but their regular ones are kind of in the middle there. Um, SMGs, I have them number one. Um, the reverse recoil works so good on the SMGs, you can kill at such range with these things. Um, yeah, I mean, it's kind of the same reason their pistols are pretty good, but on pistols... Vladoff is number one and Jacobs are number two. Neither one of those makes SMGs. I think if they did, Hyperion might be behind them, um, depending on you know how they actually worked. But uh, as it stands, they have some of the best stats on the SMGs and the reverse recoil is perfect. Uh, snipers, they are dead last. Um, their snipers don't make any sense to me. So... They're incredibly accurate, but all the snipers are accurate. This isn't Borderlands 1, so you don't gain anything from that. The They don't have any extra critical hit bonus. They have incredibly slow fire rate. Uh, the reverse recoil doesn't really hurt them. They're pretty much always on target for doll snipers. So it's not like you miss your first shot then hit your second. You, you hit them all with them, but they don't hit that hard. They hit really slow. They don't have any crit bonus. They're elemental, but you don't get the splash damage like Molly Wan. I mean, they really screwed up Hyperion Snipers in a bad way. Um, just, yeah, they they penalize them way too much for being accurate. And again, they're not really even more accurate. I mean, they are, they are a little bit, but yeah. Um, so overall, they came in at a 3 Tied with Dahl for uh, three on the regular guns, but number one on the red text, which put them at number two overall. So you guys now know who's coming out at number one. All right, so finally, number one is Vladoff. And in Borderlands, fire rate is king, I guess. It does pay off, and we will see this as we go through them. So starting with the red text, the rapier is a five because it's by far the best melee piece in the game. I mean, it's only up there for melee, but that's kind of the definition of the fives, the best of the best. It is the best of the best for melee. The Liuta is a five because it is definitely a raiding sniper, at least on zero. And it destroys the rest of the game with everyone else. And it's 
arguably the best sniper in the game. It's kind of tied with the Pimpernel. White Death for those of you that are still playing on 360. Uh, then for fours, we got a couple. We have got the Hitten, Kitten Hail and Lead Storm. We got our Hail of Assault Rifles here. Um, the Kitten Hail are the Moxie ones. They're both really great in different ways. You know, the Kitten's that really fast shotgun where you got to be close, but this DPS is great. Um, and it'll keep you alive with the sustained healing of it. The hail, the hail is just the Swiss Army knife of this game. You have splash damage, which gets grenade boost. You have a unlisted pellet bullet split. You have a, like 250% critical hit bonus, something like that. Um, you have moxie, so you have healing. You have fast fire rates, and with all those extra things, it hits pretty hard if you can get over the fire pattern. Uh, the lead storms like the hail with the arc, but uh, without the splash damage or moxie, but it's got way better stats. And instead of splitting in two, it splits into three. Um, so that I have seen uh, raiding done with both the hail and the lead storm, and I've seen the kitten used in raids. Um, during Terra, Terra's got that phase where she comes over and smashes you with all the tentacles. And the kitten, you can just... The grog sometimes are just whipping chain lightnings. You can run out of those or get hit in between them. Where the kitten, you can just shoot through them and survive that. Um, yeah, the hail, a lot of gauges have used the hail for some healing on raids while doing DPS. And then the lead storm, I've seen lead storm like B setups take down Terra and some stuff. Uh, going down to the threes then. The shred of fire, the mongol, the stinger, and the stalker. Um, it's weird. I saw a Puma video where he said like the Shredder was the worst uh, flat off red text gun or worst red text assault rifle. Maybe I forget. It was something. But uh, the Shredder fire is really fucking good. <laughs> the thing tears through enemies at OP8 with no problem, but it's not quite good enough to be a four. Um, it is ammo heavy, but it's got really fast spin up time, insane fire rate, and yeah, it just destroys enemies. The, the Mongols, it's an alright rocket launcher, it's not fantastic, um, but it's low ammo consumption and gets the job done. The Stinger and the Stalker, I, I kind of struggle with these. They kind of are better than Anarchist, but not by much, and they're Pearls and Saros, which kind of makes them hard to get. And I don't think they're enough better than the Anarchist. In some ways, with the Anarchist, because uh, you mess around with some bullet speed and some things with these, sometimes you actually are just better off with an Anarchist. So um, that's why they're only threes, not fours. You could make an argument for them to be fours because they can be very effective. Um, but it's just the fact that the Anarchist is so good and they're not enough really better to justify their rarity or difficult of getting. Um, yeah, because one's, yeah, one's a pearl, and then the other's behind the dragons, which is not an easy fight. Um, going down to the twos, I have the Veritas and the Infinity. I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, the Infinity should be a four, but the Infinity is flat out worse than an Anarchist. And that's kind of the definition of the twos, if it's not as good. Now, the Anarchist is good. I can see an argument for a three, but you are, outside of zero, you are always better off using an Anarchist. Um, the Veritas, it's kind of on pace, but it's just a blue. It's not really enough better. The red text is kind of pointless. There's really no reason to use it unless you really want to use it. And it doesn't have an optimal barrel. And then the Patriot is also a two. I forgot to say that one. Um, it's not as bad as people give it out to be, but you're way better off with a Droog. So like the Infinity, it works. It works just fine, but you're better off just using a purple version of it. So that's the Vladoff red text. No ones, which makes them pretty damn solid. Um, less fives than uh, some others. But overall, I gave them a ranking of 3.33, which is number two overall. Uh, right next to, uh, right after Hyperion. So when we go down, Vladoff uh, assault rifles, I had second to Jacobs. Uh, just the fire rate on the Vladoff ARs make them pretty effective. 
and they work pretty damn well. Regular Vlad off barrel, spin barrel, other barrel. They they work pretty well across the board. Um, launchers, I put them at number one. I've already kind of talked about this, but they have the reduced ammo consumption. They're really good. And then the Topnia is maybe the second best launcher in the game, and it's a non-red text, which is a really big deal, which really helps kind of solidify them to me at the number one for launchers. Um, pistols, I put them at number one because the Anarchist is just insanely good. Um, yeah, it chews through ammo, but it chews through enemies. They do not make shotguns or SMGs. So the last one is snipers, which they are also number one because Vladoff snipers are just insanely powerful. But also, the Vladoff barrel on snipers is almost broken because usually, like a Vladoff grip will increase your fire rate on guns but reduce damage. The Vladoff sniper barrel increases fire rate, but it does not reduce damage. And that's why the Vladoff barrel on almost all snipers, like on Molly One, a Raquel is pretty damn comparable to a Snyder with a matching barrel. <clears throat> on a Jacobs, a Diab is pretty much on par with a Muckamuck. So across the board, the Vladoff barrel on snipers is kind of insanely good. So. Definitely come off number one for snipers. So on uh, non-red text guns, they came in at number one, and then red text guns number two, putting them at overall the best manufacturer, and I think that makes sense. Um, so yeah, give me your feedback and let me know what you guys think. Um, but I'll quick recap here. So for red text guns, Hyperion came in at number one, Vladoff number two, Dull number three, Molly one number four, we had a tie at number five with TDR and Bandit. And then because of tie at five, there's no six. So then we go down to Torg at seven and eight on Jacobs. For non-red text, we go number one, Vladoff. Number two, Jacobs. Number three was a tie between Dahl and Hyperion. Then no number four because that tie. Then we had a tie at number five for Molly One and TDR. So no six. And then Torg at seven and Bandit at eight. So this is how I came into trying to rake all the gun manufacturers in kind of a more objective way. Um, although there's always going to be subjectivity. And I try to avoid it as good as possible. Um, now some of you guys might... The tough thing is like, where do you weigh things? And that's where I didn't, you know, get into any further. Because, you know, on Torg being so low, does the Deepa being so good outweigh some of the other stuff being so bad? And all of that. Um, I try not to put any of my bias in here. Jacobs is number one, my favorite manufacturer in the game. And I rank them at number five out of eight. So less than average. So I think I avoided uh, that. And I def I don't really like Dahl and Vladoff that much. And they both came in at top at one and three. Um, I don't like TDR. I actually really don't like TDR at all. They tied with Jacobs, so um, I think that shows that I try to avoid bias. I'm sure there's some bias I put in here that's impossible to avoid, but I tried my best to avoid it, and I think I did a decent job. So let me know in the comments below at uh, what you think about everything, where you agree and where you disagree. And, yeah, I guess I'm back. I don't think I'm going to hit daily uploads. Life is just really busy for me right now, but I am going to try to get in and... Uh, get some more regular content uploading because I kind of miss you guys. I miss Borderlands and yeah, so I'm back a little bit. Thanks for watching as always. Uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button, um, hit that notification alert and all of that fun jazz. And I'll see you guys around. Thanks for watching. Bye.